Pi Zero just dropped and is changing everything. With this AI model, robots can perform almost any human task. This robot foundation model from physical intelligence could unlock the future of a general purpose robot. Let's dive into the details of this AI robot controller. If you're new here, make sure to check out the links in the video description and subscribe for more robotics and AI. So many of us are familiar with LLMs, large language models, and VLMs, visual language models, things like ChatGPT and Dolly. So the way these big models work is they're typically pre-trained on large data from image or text from the web, and then it's then fine-tuned on custom data. So this whole process is what allows these language models to work very well for different applications. So with general robot policies or robot foundation models, we could follow a similar structure where we're going to be focusing on using a lot of pre-trained data that's been trained on images and text from the web and then fine tune it on custom data. So I'll be going over some details about that. But the main thing is we're leveraging some existing data, but adding more to it so we get a head start. But first, let's talk about some challenges with robot foundation models. So one of the main thing is we're working with a large scale data set. So a lot of times you're going to have data set that we typically get from a VLM model, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. But we also have to add additional data from robots. We have robots of different configurations. So we're working with a lot of data here. And we also need to have the correct model architecture. So for things like VLMs, they typically don't receive robot trajectories as inputs or outputs. So we need to modify it so that it could adapt to robots. And we also need to have a correct training recipe. We need to learn how much to use for pre-training, post-training, how to allocate the data, what types of data to use, how to fine tune it. So it's all in the details of the training. So let's talk about some of the innovations that Pi Zero brings to robot foundation models. So the first thing is they created a VLA vision language action model that's derived from Google's VLM model called Polygemma. It's a 3 billion parameter model that they're using. And the reason they chose a small one is because it's really good for a real-time application where speed actually matters. And because it's such a small size, you can imagine it could be ported onto a low-cost hardware to run your robots in. So one of the main advantages of pre-training on something like Google's VLM model is that it leverages all of the data that has been trained on. So you don't have to create a model and train it from scratch. So this really gives them a pretty good head start. But you're thinking, okay, so we have a VLM that typically doesn't work with a robot. How do you make a VLM model work with the robot? So this is where they came up or they started integrating things like the action chunking architecture and flow matching part which actually does a translation of the robot actions to something that the model can understand and interpret and also give you new trajectories. So without this architectural change, all of these things that you see here with the robots folding clothes is not possible. So specifically, the architecture that they've set up, it allows a 50 hertz uh, speed for the trajectory. So what that means is you can imagine you're spending, you're sending the speed commands 50 times every second. So that's what it means to be running at 50 hertz. And the next thing that they've done is they did pre-training on 10,000 hours of seven robots and 68 different tasks. The thing is, they typically come up with these 68 different tasks, but then when they want to apply it to a very specific task, they'll utilize the same strategies that we do in things like ChatGPT, where they will actually fine tune it for a specific dexterous task. So it's the same thing that you could think about, like when you have ChatGPT that's been trained on a large data set, but maybe you have some internal data that you're working with, you would want to train it using that internal data. So the same concept applies for robot learning where you could train it on general purpose tasks. You have seven different types of robots, some that's only one arm, some maybe two arms, some may have six joints, some may have seven joints. So there's a lot of different variations, right? And you have a lot of different possible tasks that is learned from. But when you actually wanted to do a very specific task, like for example, if it's like uh, 
pouring water into a plant to water it, for example, then you would need to train it on that very specific task. So there's a lot of future work to be done. This is definitely just the infancy of robot learning. But one of the main things is you need to understand the weights of the different data for pre-training. So what this means is you have a lot of data that you're working with, right? But right now it's still unknown for researchers to know exactly what data is more important and what is not important. How much of what data do we need more of and what do we need less of? So this is what I mean by weights is they don't know the exact amounts of each things that they need and how each amount would affect it. Um, the relationship between your input of your data and the output of your performance. So this is a tricky part that's still ongoing, uh, but hopefully in the next few years we could figure that part out. Another thing is understanding how to predict how much data and what kind of data for perfect performance. So of course, a lot of times when we see demos, you're gonna see the good side of things. But in practice, they, they told us that there's gonna be cases where it's gonna struggle or maybe the performance is not near perfect. So to understand how the data affects the performance is gonna be a pretty challenging part of the robot learning process. Another thing that's still ongoing research is understanding how much can transfer to other domains like autonomous vehicles, legged like robots, and navigation. But the hope is that the same strategies that we're applying here for robot arms can extend to these different things. But overall, despite these challenges that we see, you can see that the development that we're seeing right now is still very impressive. And even though we're still very early on, the results that we're seeing is actually quite incredible. I'll definitely be looking forward to the years to come and see how much robot learning will advance in the next few years. So if you'd like to learn more about it, you could read this paper called Pi Zero, a vision language action flow model for general robot control. So this paper lays out all the details about how their model works, the challenges that they're facing, how they address these challenges, most of which I already talked about, but they have some more details on it, which you could read about. They go into the details of their pre-training and post-training. And a lot of times the training part is actually the most important. So they dive into the details of that so you could read more about it. They also have their model on Hugging Face, so go ahead and check that out. You can also go ahead and check out this repo here called Lee Robot. This is good for people who want to learn more about end-to-end -end robot learning. So they have some resources here. They have some kits for robots that you can play with. They have different simulation environments as well, like the Aloha environment and other environments you could play with to test out your reinforcement learning policies. But go ahead and check that out. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.